Hi, I'm Mike Brennan, one of the engineering supervisors at McNaught McKay Electric Company. In this video, we're going to discuss the differences between EDS files and add-on profiles. EDS files are text description files which show information about devices. The software is used by RS Links to determine an icon and information that's configurable for each individual device. There are two ways to get EDS files from devices. The first is by right-clicking on the device to see if you have the ability to upload the EDS file directly out of the device. In the case of this RFID block, we can right-click and upload the device using a wizard. Once we've uploaded the EDS file, you'll notice in the RS Who window that the device will go from a question mark to the appropriate icon with all the information about that individual device. Another method is through a website. What we'll need to do is get some information about the device. We'll need to get the first piece of the part number of the device as well as the firmware revision that is required. We'll open up our browser and we'll browse to http colon slash slash www.ab.com forward slash networks forward slash EDS. This website provides data files for many different networks including EDS files, Profibus GSD files, and IOLink IODD files. We'll select EDS files, choose an Ethernet IP network, and introduce the catalog number for the Kinetic 6500 that we're looking for. We'll need to remember that we were looking for the S1 version at revision 3.1 firmware. We'll choose to download the EDS file, which will download very quickly because it is just a text description. I'll show you the contents of that file. Again, it includes data about the file as well as icon information and anything that's configurable about that individual file. In order to install an EDS file, we'll need to use a separate tool. You'll find that tool under Start, all programs, Rockwell Software, RS Links, Tools, EDS Hardware Installation Tool. It's a very simple wizard that will open up, allow us to add by directory or an individual file. We'll browse to the file we just downloaded, click Open, Next. It will validate the EDS file and install it for us. We can open up RS Links to verify that the EDS file was successfully registered. In the past we had a question mark. Now you'll see that that device is now registered with all the appropriate information and icon about it. Add-on profiles are used under Studio 5000. Those can be downloaded from the programmable or the PCDC. We'll type in a part number for a 1732 ES block because we need the add-on profile for that individual block. You can see you can download it directly from the website. You can also show what revisions the add-on profile is good for. So you can see that we can use that add-on profile through revision 18. We'll select the individual files and download the add-on profile. Once the add-on profile has been downloaded, we can navigate to the directory where the file was downloaded and unzip the zip file. Contained in the zip file will be an executable called mpsetup.exe. We'll need to run that setup to install the add-on profile. The profile is already installed on this computer and you'll notice that the setup will look for the existence of the add-on profile and will tell us that the add-on profile is already installed. 
Again, add-on profiles are used in Studio 5000. To validate that the profile has properly been installed, we'll create a project in Studio 5000. Because we chose a safety I.O. block, we'll need to choose a GuardLogix controller. We pick an L73S, enter a project name, create a blank project, we'll add in an Ethernet card in slot 2. If we didn't have an add-on profile and we had an Ethernet card installed, when we attempted to create the Ethernet safety I.O. block, the module add-on profile would not be contained in this list. As you can see, it's contained in this list. We'll create the add-on profile, call it SB1, give it an I.O. block address of 11, and the add-on profile is correctly installed. We'll open up and you can see where you can configure your input and output information for the individual block. If you have any additional questions or for more videos like this, please feel free to give us a call or visit our website.